and you have been killed by them of the knowledge of yourself and of the knowledge of them. And the only way that you can enjoy your salvation, you got to know yourself. And you got to know them. Well, who is this Yaku? <laughs> Prophesying from the Isle of Patmos. didn't know nothing about genetic engineering, right. <laughs> did no, sir. No, sir. Matter of fact, if, unless you just graduated from school just a few years ago, you didn't know nothing about it till just a few years ago. Yes, now you know all about genetic engineering. Now they're talking about making tomatoes through genetic engineering, and they're going to have uh, like uh, pig genes in the tomato to make the tomato fat. <laughs> They're going to be having that in the supermarket real soon. Have you a pig to me? And they're making them square. Genetic engineering. You can take a natural living thing, manipulate the genetic material in it, in other words, the chromosomes, and then you can make it into something that God never created. By inbreeding parents that are genetically closely related, negative outcomes can arise. The offspring will all share very similar genes, which could make some diseases more dangerous as all individuals would have the same weaknesses. The reduced gene pool also means that they are more vulnerable as they have less chance of being able to adapt to changes in the environment such as climate change. There's also an increased risk of genetic disease caused by recessive genes. Being genetically very similar, if both parents carry the recessive gene for a genetic disease, like cystic fibrosis, then the offspring will all inherit this disease. The white tiger is a good example of severe mutations building up due to the inbreeding of individuals that are too closely related. Uh, in cats, such as the cat family, the lions, all the left is, uh, of its family, is lesser in power uh, than the original lion. And uh, that which is grafted from the original lion, this lion is, uh, is uh, not to be trusted too much. As we take in the left foot and in the uh, other cats from the lion family, all the lion family, they are more dangerous and cannot be trusted uh, uh, like we can uh, this original lion here. The original lion, we can take him and make him lie around us even at our old age, and we can still trust him. But we can't trust this leopard and these other uh, cats because they have, uh, by nature, some of them evil, he's wicked, he's just wicked, that's all, and through the graft it is. He pumps upon us while we're not even looking at it. When we know in the day he's uh, destroyed us. So we don't trust them. But we will trust the original lion there. Get them when he's a little cub, and we can bring him up like 
sitting in the house, <laughs> walking around and playing with him. Until he's an old man. <laughs> and then his civilization. So it is with their human being. White tigers are not their own species, but rather the result of a double recessive gene that results in a condition called leucism. Leucism takes away from the tiger's pigmentation, giving them their white coat and blue eyes. When you do that to any living germ, then you have made a devil. Yes, sir. Yaqub did that 6,000 years ago with human beings. Right. The scientists of the day are beginning to get to the point where they can do it with other creatures. So you have a white mouse and a white rat, or even though at home, the mice and rats that you got at home, <laughs> you know the ones I mean. <laughs> you ain't never surprised a white mouse in your kitchen. Have you? No, you ain't sir. never caught a white rat in no trap, have you? No, no, sir. Although you know the scientists have made such creatures for scientific experimentation. Well, if you can do that with a mouse or rat or rabbit, any any hunters in the audience? You ever go out in the field hunting and come home with a white rabbit? No, sir. no you ain't never found a white rabbit out there <laughs> running in the field. But they exist, don't they? In a laboratory. Made by some scientists for an experiment. Well, what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is saying is exactly the same thing. That 6,600 and some odd years ago, Yaku grafted original black people and made a people that were unalike that we call Caucasian. The word Caucasian meaning stale face and weak bones. How wise this black man was. That at four years old, he entered school. At six years old, he came, he had an epiphany and came to knowledge of his mission in life. At 18 years old, he had completed every educational institution in Arabia at the time during which he spent a lot of time in laboratories under microscopes examining mm -hmm. the genome of the black man and woman. So he was a prodigy. That's the point of dropping out there big hit is scientists. He wasn't allowed to do his grafting in Arabia, so their ship sailed out to an island in the Aegean Sea called Pilan. In the Bible, it's called Patmos. He established a system of policies, procedures, and laborers. His laborers consisted of doctors, ministers, nurses, and cremators. Doctors, nurses, ministers, and cremators. Those hospital officials were the very ones, or hospital personnel, were the very ones responsible for executing the plan to create the white race by killing the darker. And so we find that the hospital today is still imbibes the spirit of Yaqub's work. That's why the hospital, I have said in discussing the scientific assault on black America that the hospital, which was set up to experiment on poor people, primarily poor black people, that it's a very dangerous place for the black man and woman. I think it was Sister Dr. Washington, who called mm -hmm. or who described medical apartheid. Yeah. And when you recall the scientific death that the apartheid regime unleashed on black people, if the medical establishment here in America, if the hospitals 
can be described as medical apartheid that appropriately hints at the scientific death that black patients are met with. And yes, this is a legacy of the work of Yakub. His laborers were doctors and nurses then, and his laborers are doctors and nurses today. How did Yakub make them? It was through a process of controlling the birth of babies. If I wanted to breed horses, could I let the horses go out there and mate any kind of way they want to? If I was breeding dogs or cattle or sheep or any creature like that, if I want to breed a certain type of cattle or sheep or goat or whatever, don't I have to control them? Yes, sir. And make sure that I choose who mates with who? Well, that's what Yakub did. He set up a system like that to control the mating of human beings because he was trying to produce certain characteristics in human beings that normally would not occur. 6,600 years ago. Well, if that is so, is that a teaching of hate? You said that the thing that causes us to be listed as a hate group is our teaching on Yakub. My question to you is, can you, with all of your scientists, disprove what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad has said of you? You are not an ancient people. You are new people on our planet. You had to have a place of origin and you had to have a source from which you originated. You even put out a movie called Children of a Lesser God. And Yakub was a god, all right, but he was a lesser god to the god who originated the heavens and the earth and all in between. You are a scientific experiment that we did with ourselves to see whether evil had the same power as good. So in the germ of the black man, the life germ, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that Yaqub saw the brown germ in the life germ of the black man, a black germ and a brown germ. And he said that if he could separate that brown germ, he could drive it into its last stage and clothe it with flesh and give it form and expression and that Mr. Yakub did. Yakub was born 20 miles outside of the city of Mecca in Arabia. Go to the book of Habakkuk. It says God came from Teman and the Holy One from Mount Paran. These are two cities in Arabia. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad asked, which one of these two would you take for your Lord? The God that came out of Teman or the Holy One from Mount Paran? Arabia is the birthplace of Yaqub. It is where he taught the 30% who were dissatisfied to follow him. But the rulers of Arabia would not allow him to make his people on that peninsula. So they assigned him to the island of Pilan or Patmos in the Aegean Sea. And there he took his followers and the process of grafting white out of black began. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said it took 600 years. The process was a birth control process, a selective breeding process where you married the, the lighter on to the lighter and you killed the darker, saved the lighter, marrying the lighter on to the lighter. And after 200 years, 
the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said God revealed to him that there was a brown civilization on our planet. And 200 more years of that same process, a yellow civilization was in existence. And 200 years after that, that same process continued for 600 years. And at the end of that time, there was a blonde haired, blue eyed creature on our planet that is called the Caucasian. So this uh, uh, man uh, discovered this, as I first said, according to the teachings of Almighty God to me, uh, by the germ. And it still can be proven today that uh, the black man have two people in him. How, sir? Yes, sir. You have to. How, is this, how can this be proved? And by his, by the germ, the germ <coughs> you have here, take for an instant, well, let me come to the surface first. Uh, you go to the darkest people that you can find in Africa, where that they has never been touched by uh, Caucasian people. And you will find that one will be a little shader browner than the other. And uh, this man set up a birth control law to take that browner one and marry the browner one on to the browner one and kill off the black. And uh, <coughs> he kept this going for 600 years. First he had a little brown race of people after 200 years. And the next 200 years, he had a uh, little yellow race of people, a uh, red race, we say. And the next 200 years, he had uh, a pale white. Method of birth control. Yes, he killed the black baby and saved the brown one. Or uh, killed the brown one, saved the brown one. Killed the brown one and saved the yellow one. <laughs> you see, he would run it into his last stage, and the last stage is white. And uh, that can be done today. It is not nothing that is uh, a mystery, impossible. It can be done today. But uh, I don't think that they want any more drafting. Uh, <laughs> I think they've about got enough of that. And the black is the original. He's the father of, of them all. All these other races are derivatives of the black race. That's right. That's right. Because look, I know you're a wise man. And so you mustn't, you, you must understand that I'm a baby in wisdom, but I'm not a fool. And he's saying here today that the Caucasian is in fact the, whole, the oldest group on the planet. I beg to differ. Look. Look, one of the most famous anthropologists is Professor Leakey. And when Professor Leakey went in search of the origin of human beings and human species, he didn't stop very long in Europe. He went to Africa. And the oldest bones and the oldest human beings to this day that you call Zinzanthropus, using the Latin meaning Zin and Zanthropus, meaning a black man, that oldest man, they say, is millions of years old. You went back and found one even older than that. You called her Lucy, a black woman. Go ahead. And every, every sensible historian, anthropologist today agrees that the black man is the father of human beings. Even your geneticist, Mr. Mendel. Go ahead, go ahead. You have Mendel's law. Go ahead. Mendel says that light eyes are recessive. Light skin is recessive. You can take the recessive, the dark skin is dominant, the dark eyes are dominant. You can take the recessive from the dominant, but you can't get the dominant from the recessive. This is Mendel's law. And so, all of your scientists have proved Teach, Muhammad. that you can't look. Black is not even a color. That's right. Teach. Black is the mother and father of all colors. And if you want a baby, even if the woman is a white woman, the baby has to come out of the triple darkness of her womb. And this is the origin of all life. Within the black, you have the whole color spectrum. But in white, 
You can, two white people laying down together, they can only produce white. But two black people in darkest Africa can lay down together and produce albino with blonde hair and blue eyes. That's right, teach Muhammad. This happens all the time. Teach and so we need to really get these facts correct today and understand that as, as gray as your, hair, as your hair is, you are listening to your father today. Teach, Muhammad. This is daddy talking. Teach. And, um, and we mustn't turn. God, is it true? I'm not mocking. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that John the Revelator is a Yaqub, the father of this present world and the maker of the Caucasian race of people from the brown germ of the original black man. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us, and it's right there in the first chapter of Revelations, John is saying, I, John, I, John, for a testimony for Jesus Christ on the Isle of Patmos for the word of the Lord. Patmos, as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us, is really the island of Pilan where the Caucasian race was brought into existence. John's testimony was of Jesus Christ because John was on that island looking forward to the time when his people would be made from the black and then the brown, and then the yellow, and then the final stage of the grafting process, uh, white. And that uh, people then were permitted to come back into the Holy Land, and within six months, as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad has taught us, they turned the Holy Land upside down. And so they were gathered and cable towed and everything was taken from them except the language and they were marched 2200 miles into the hills and cave sides of Europe where they remained for 2000 years of their 6000 years to rule. But John the revelator was looking at the coming of Jesus Christ whose presence in the world would symbolize the end of his civilization and the end of his people. So John said when this one came, he would say, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending. He represents the original people of the earth who have suffered for 6,000 years under the contrary rule of the Caucasian people. Look at that scripture in Revelations, chapter 6. Verse 8. It says, And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that rode upon him was death. Now, wait a minute. Who's speaking here? Come on, good question. I said, I look. Well, who is the I that is speaking? Well, it's the author of the book of Revelation. Right, come on. If you go back to the beginning of the book of Revelation, which is the last book placed in the Bible, it is actually called the Revelation of St. John right. the Divine. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. From the Isle of Patmos. Right. <coughs> now, despite the fact that it is placed last in the among the books of the Bible, right. the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said Revelations really was the first book right. written yes, sir. of the Bible. Yes, sir. But it is placed last because. It is the revelation showing you the end times of the present world right. of 6,000 years. 
Yes, sir. It was actually written more than 6,000 years ago. Well, if it was written more than 6,000 years ago, then how could the author of the book be a man called John? Since John is an English name, and the English language is only 700 years old, how could that man have been called John? Come on. They must have just recently started calling him John. So what was he called before he got to be called John? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad says that the English name John is derived from the Hebrew Jacob. But even that does not solve the problem because Hebrew is just a little over 4,000 years old. So what was the man's name before he was called Jacob? Well, now you're back to the original language, Arabic, and in Arabic his name was Yaqub. An interview to Henry Louis Gates, professor from Harvard in New Yorker magazine, where he asked you whether you still subscribe to the teachings of Elijah Muhammad on Yaqub a black scientist who 6,600 years ago created the white man and that in, by the end of the 20th century a spaceship will come and rain down upon white people and people who don't embrace Islam. Do you subscribe to the teachings of Yaqub that Yaqub the black scientist created the white man? I subscribe to every word that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us. You know it's not unreal to believe that white people who genetically cannot produce yellow, brown or black had a black origin. Uh, the scholars and scientists of this world agree that the origin of man and mankind started in Africa and that the first parent of the world was black. The Quran says that God created Adam out of black mud and fashioned him into shape. So if white people came from the original people or black people, what is the process by which you came to life? That is not a, a silly question, that is a scientific question with a scientific answer. It doesn't suggest that we are superior or that you are inferior. It suggests, however, that your birth or your origin is from the black people of this earth. Superiority and inferiority is determined by our righteousness and not by our color. So Yaakov, a black scientist, created whites. We believe that, yes. John in the Bible in Patmos, who was on the Isle of Patmos, which is in the Aegean Sea, uh, for the word of the Lord, which is to let us make man in the image of the original. The characteristics of the white man is evil. He was made like that through uh, nature now, we say. Naturally, he was made like that. Uh, we would say, then, uh, devil. We can say a devil uh, cat out there, a devil element, a devil we could call most any grafted thing, a devil, you see. But actually, when we say Satan, we mean uh, a man or a people that their uh, weakness is not, say, uh, confined to themselves. It spreads. And the others is affected by their weakness. And the white man, we say, is the devil. Why? Because of his weak, physically uh, coming into being from original man, uh, aboriginal people of the earth. The race question, the origin of the races. Uh, the, in the beginning of the races, they numbered around uh, four. And from these four, races of people they has produced many different types of people uh, but they are not uh, say independent uh, in their beginning um, they came from uh, one we say today we have lots of various color people all over the earth from, uh, we say, from brown to white. 
we are not all the same color due to intermixing with uh, such colors as black, brown, yellow, and red, and white. This has produced it many other various colors. And uh, the origin of it, according to the teachings of uh, Master Farad Muhammad, to me, was from a scientist, a god, we uh, see him. We see him as a god. Uh, back 6,000 years ago, uh, started a, uh, we say, a, a scientific, or I should say, uh, a master grafting uh, work on the human being to produce a new civilization, a new race of people from the original race of people, our aboriginal people. This man, Yakub, uh, <coughs> who uh, discovered in the joint of uh, the black man that uh, he had uh, two people in him and that he uh, had learned through study and experimenting on germs that uh, this uh, second germ could produce a powerful people uh, that would be able to rule uh, that which they came from. For uh, uh, around 6,000 years until the, the father or uh, the aboriginal produces one uh, superior to his man. And that uh, was this, that he taken through experimental work on the germ of man, a people of uh, what we call today a white race. But before he produced it, that white race, he produced it a brown race. He produced it a yellow race and uh, so on. There is uh, his first uh, grafting from the black man according to the teachings of Master Farad Muhammad to whom we see him and know him today as being God in person. <coughs> that uh, this grafting in its first stage, he had a brown race of people from a black people. And uh, it taken him, according to the teachings of God, 200 years to produce that brown race. And he kept up the process of uh, killing off the uh, browner or the darker one and marrying the lighter one on to the lighter one. Uh, for another 200 years, he had a uh, uh, yellow race of people. And in this length of time, these brown people were spreading over uh, the airy, uh, I would say, uh, migrating over the earth to find them a home to themselves. And so, that when the yellow race w was produced, it, uh, he uh, started to migrating over the earth. And uh, from the yellow race, about 200 years, this grafting kept in process. Uh, they, there was on the same uh, alert, uh, well, it was an alert, he was on, according to the teachings of Almighty God to me in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, to whom praise it do forever. Uh, at that time, 200 years, keeping up birth control law, this is what he established. He established it on this island, and there was his lab that he was uh, awakening, we call it a human lab, to produce his man. And from this yellow race, he had a white race 200 years later from them. And this was the end of his work. 
This was the man he was trying to get to. That was our white race. And uh, that made it, uh, uh, in the total time of his grafting out of black, white, 600 years. And uh, this figure uh, tallies with the Bible's teaching of uh, the man being created in six days. This is, uh, this days here you have means uh, uh, a thousand, upon me, uh, a hundred years each, six hundred years. And this also tallies with the creation of the universe, that's six, uh, the whole entire universe according to uh, the Quran was also created in six uh, periods of time. And so Mr. Yakub, the mighty scientist of that time, he produced it, his man, on six, because it did tally with the creation of the universe, and it was uh, to this number uh, that he could not further uh, his work. And uh, they would be masters, gods, to rule the earth, and the people, everything of life, uh, for 6,000 years. And at the end of 6,000 years, the aboriginal people will uh, have at that time produced it another one, uh, mightier than uh, Yakub in wisdom and knowledge. And uh, he would be equal with that one that uh, created the heavens and the earth. And uh, uh, he would have the power and the infinitive wisdom to make his word be as the first one. And uh, this is the man we have before us today, to whom praise is due, Master Farad Muhammad, uh, is that man that have the wisdom or the knowledge, <coughs> excuse me, of how the creation took place in the first In the Quran, in the 30th verse of the second chapter, it reads, And when thy Lord said to the angels, I am going to place a ruler in the earth, the angels said to their Lord, Wilt thou place in it such as make mischief in it and shed blood? And we celebrate thy praise and extol thy holiness. Allah said, surely I know what you know not. Here is the Lord of the angels saying, I am going to place in the earth a ruler, somebody who is going to give rules and guidance to the people of the earth. And the angels questioned God saying, wilt thou place in it such as make mischief in it and shed blood, the angels saw that what was about to rule the earth would be one who would make mischief in the earth and cause the shedding of blood. If, beloved listeners, Allah is the author of peace and not of confusion. He is the author of justice and righteousness and truth. But here is a ruler coming to the earth that is going to make mischief in the earth and cause the shedding of blood. Right there is the making of a devil. 
when the white man saw gold, he went mad. He, he called it a gold rush. And he started to kill people for a metallic object. The white man, he came into what he called a new world. Teach Muhammad. And so all of a sudden you started to name things. Teach Muhammad. So that's why you called it America. Teach. Based on, uh, what was his name? Um, Amerigo Vespucci. A Caucasian. Africa. That's why you call it Africa. Based on the European explorer called, explorer called Africanus. You went into America. You called it New York. That's right. Because it was new to you. New England. You call it New England. That's right. You call it New Zealand. You call it New Found Land. Because it was new to you. But to us, we were already there. That's why we're called Aboriginals. From Ab, meaning abstracted from the Father. Muhammad. From God Himself. Original, meaning the first. But you won't find Caucasian people calling themselves Aboriginal. Teach. Anywhere on the planet. Teach, Muhammad. Because you're the new man, teach. Paul Newman. Teach, teach. You're a brand new man teach. to the planet. And I say again, because I know you think we're joking. And we don't back off from this one iota. Teach. We made you. We made you through a process of genetic engineering. 6,000 years ago, from one blood came all human beings, but we produced you from us. Because within us, there are two germs, a black one and a brown one. This is not to use, this is not insulting language, this is science. And we found within ourselves a contrary nature. And so, we engineered this from ourselves, and it was produced as a Caucasian human being. And the first one of you that came on the planet was just 6,600 years ago. What was the point that you mentioned? Human. Humus. Look at this. Even the word human. You, you've heard the term uh, of a darker hue. Human. Meaning a dark man. Human, a man of color. Humus. That's why the top soil of the earth is called humus. It is the dark organic material that gives life to the earth. Teach, teach. Whenever you take away the dark organic material or you denature it, you're left with white granulated sand. Teach, teach. Desert. Right. You want to see those of us who think that white something to glorify in. No, no, no. You know, do you know that there's no such thing as a white mice found in nature? Teach, teach. Do you know that all white mice were manufactured because they are weak and that's the only kind of mice that they can really do laboratory experimentation on? Teach, teach. And so they have produced them through genetic white engineering. A white it. rabbit, you'll never find a white rabbit running in nature. Teach, that was put teach. there by, from a laboratory. Teach. And so you got to understand that white intrinsically is the weaker side of black. White is not the strength. White is in fact the weak aspect. And so when you want real flour, you go and get yourself some whole grain flour. You got to go and get whole meal. It's got to have the whole meal in it. It's called brown flour. White and that's the one that wise people eat. You don't eat this, but then you, you, you make the white flour, which you've totally denatured, and you call it mighty white. When you look at the, the great white shark, when you look at the great white shark, it's not white. You're so desperate to have white things that are great. great that you, you call it a great white. great white. You call it the great white whale. It's not a white whale. It's not white. White. It's black or, or grey, but it's not white. You, you, you can't get a heavyweight champion, so you're looking for a great white hope. You try and turn Frank Bruno into a white man in desperation. This is real. I'm saying it's a, it's a psychological thing with white people where you want to find your place. And your scientists and your historians, they spend so much time asking the question, where do we come from? Because they are puzzled as to your origin. They ask the question, why do we kill the way we do? Because there's a different nature. You have a different nature to the rest of the members of the human family. Look at the Chinese. Look at the Asians. Look at the black people. All of us got dark eyes. All of us got black hair. The only one on the planet who's got ginger hair. Blonde hair, brown hair, grey hair, brunette. You see, you gotta understand, you gotta understand pedigree. 
And you gotta understand mongolization. See. I'm telling you the truth. Go ahead. Because when you got a dog and it's all spotted and all different colors, you call it a mongrel. But when you see a pedigree, it is uniformed. And it has a consistency to it. And the white man, you just came yesterday. And you are a you are a mixture. Right. Of us, colored man. you are the colored man. You are the one that's gone around the world making everything based on color. You were the one who went into Australia. You were the one who went into South Africa. You were the one who went into Asia and classified people and things based on color. That's why you call one of us octoroon, another one quadroon, another one half caste, another one mulatto. I mean, these are classifications from you, not from us. We never saw people based on their color. We saw people as human beings. But the white man is the one who came along and made all of these classifications. So that's why this man, Yakub, he wasn't a madman, he wasn't a mad scientist. He was a good scientist and he just wanted to see if he could bring out from the black man the other side of the black man, the negative side of him and make it live. And he was successful after 600 years of grafting, he produced a Caucasian. And the Caucasian person is a person who is a person who is anti-nature. That's why when the sun comes out, I'm energized. Me and the sun, we got a relationship. I love the sun. I don't need no sunscreen. I don't get cancer from the sun. Me and the sun have got a good relationship. I love it and it loves me. But white people, you got to put sunblock on. You got to hide from the sun because now you you might get a little melanoma. Part of me on you, that means your death. Why would the life giver, which is the sun, be against your very life? Why is it that instead of harmonizing with the planet, you're forever trying to fight against nature? Why is it that when I come out of my mother's womb as a baby, I've got natural rhythm? But white people, for you to learn to dance, you've got to write it out, paint the steps on the floor. My, my women, they walk with a, a, a great big house on their head in Africa and in the Caribbean by nature. Perfect balance, perfect poise. Nobody has to teach them, but the white woman when she is coming from the aristoc uh, aristocracy and she's going through finishing school, she has to have a little book placed on her head to teach her how to walk properly. Because it's not natural to you, but it's natural to us. It is natural to the black people. It comes out of us like a web comes out of a spider. Now, now what does he mean? Well, number one, he teaches us that uh, that never was a real serpent. It was not a real serpent that went into the garden. What was it? But as you know, the Bible is written in symbols and parables, and this serpent or snake is a symbol that's used to hide the real identity of the one whom that actually was. But who was it? The white man. It's now, is this your standard teaching? Yes. He teaches us that the black man, by nature, is divine. Now, does this mean that the white man by nature is evil? By nature, he is other than divine. Well, now, does this mean that he's evil? Can he do good? By nature, he is evil. He cannot do good. History is best qualified to reward all research, and we don't have any his historic uh, example where we have found that they collectively, as a people, have done good. As you may recall in the genesis of the Bible, as well as in the Quran, the enemy is looked upon as a serpent. But you know, as we said in a previous broadcast, serpents don't talk. So Satan is a human being. And remember we said that there's something inside of the human being that is of God, but there's also something inside of the human being that is of the adversary of God. Do you teach them what you just said to me, that the white man is a symbol of evil? Uh, you can go to any little 
Muslim child and ask him where is hell or who is the devil, and he wouldn't tell you that hell is down in the ground or that the devil is something invisible that, that you can't see. He'll tell you hell is right where he has been catching it, and he'll tell you who the one who is responsible for him uh, having received this hell is the devil. And he would say that this devil is the right man. Yes. What kind of education we've received in the wilderness of North America. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad called this the wilderness of North America. And the minister said last week, look at the first four letters and you can see why it's called that. Wild. Now this is a wild spot here. Is that right? Wildernesses are judged or ruled by beasts. So he said last week that we are under the number six and we've been taught and educated, raised and reared in a world that's not ruled by human beings, but is ruled by beasts in human form. This is what Yakub made. Yakub, he says, count the number of the beasts, for it is also the number of a man, and his number is what? Six, three scores, six, six, six and six. Well, we live in Yakub's do you bear witness, world, do you bear witness? Well, how Yakub was six years old when he was playing with two pieces of metal. Is that right? He had 60,000 followers. It took him 600 years to graft. The people created mischief in Mecca for six months. They were set out to rule for 6,000 years. The average height of his made man was six feet tall. He had six ounces of grafted brain. His first world war was in 1914. When you add one, nine, one, and four, it equals 15, and one and a five is what? Six, World War II, 1941. One, nine, four, one, 15 again, and the one and the five is what? Vietnam War, 1950. One, nine, five, zero, 15 again, and the one and the five is what? Six, if you died in that war, you were carried by six pallbearers. And when they buried us, they buried us six feet deep. The police badge got a six-point star with six angles that are 60 degrees. He carried a six-shooter. When you first start school in this world, you're six years of age. When you reach maturity, you're 18. That's three sixes put together. Do y'all see what I'm saying? All praise is due to Allah. All praise is due to Allah. We're not in the world of a man, we're in the world of a beast. All praise is due to Allah. He, he changes daylight saving time every six months. If you want to know what's going on, you turn on the six o'clock news. You turn to A, B, C. A is the first letter, B is the second, C is the third. One plus two plus three equals six. Or you turn to C, B, S. C is the third letter, B is the second letter, S is the 19th letter. Add it up, it becomes 24. Two plus four is what? Or if you're crazy enough to turn on this racist no good station, Fox. F is the sixth letter. O is the 15th letter, one plus five is six. X is the 24th letter and two plus four is what? So in Fox is six, six, six. His currency is six inches long. It's made up in six forms. You got a penny, a nickel, a dime, a quarter, a 50 cent piece, and a dollar bill. His language is in six tenses. Past, present, future tense, and past, present, future perfect tense. You still with me? The capital of America is Washington, D.C. D in the Roman numerals is 500 and C is 100. Five plus 100 is 600. Is that right? We live in America, which is two million by three, or 2,000 by 3,000 square miles, six million square miles. Y'all still with me? You know, even the man that's faking like he's the vicar of Christ, the Pope. If you were to look at the head adornment or the fez that he wears, you would see the words vicarious file dia. And if you added up the words in the Roman numerals for each letter, 
that represent a number in vicarious, it would become 112. Fili, F-I-L-I-I, would become 53. And D-E-I, Dia, would be 501. 112 plus 53 plus 501 equals 6, 6, 6. He ain't representing God and his Christ. He's representing Satan himself. The real vicar of Christ. The real vicar of Christ. The real Pope is the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. He is the one that will get us, he's the door to get us into the mind of Christ. All praises are due to Allah. All praises are due to Allah. Wait a minute, now somebody might have got confused. Because they started clapping too so They might have thought I said that the Caucasian white man is a devil. No, I didn't say a devil. I said that is the devil. When you read, when you read of devil in the Bible, in the Holy for one, it is talking about that Caucasian white man who is Yaqub's grafted devil. Yes, devil is a word with a scientific meaning. Yes, right. When we call him devil, we are not calling him out of his name. No, sir. When somebody calls you out of your name, you are justified in being offended. But the white man is not offended by being called devil. That's right. He knows that's his name. That's he right. just wish we wouldn't use it. That's right. In the 60 year teaching of Yaku and the making of the devil, the white man has never denied that he's the devil. That's right. He just said, I just wish y'all wouldn't say that. That's right. That's right. And quite naturally, he wish we would say that because when you find out he's the devil, then you don't want to follow him no more. I love myself since God made me to know myself. Before I knew myself, I loved white people because I thought they were the God speak. But I learned they had a God that was mine. And I don't want their God. I thought all of us had the same God. Well, you got to think again. <laughs> Go ahead, David. The scientists of the white people today gladly witness with me. They know they are not the people that came in the beginning of the creation of the heavens and the earth. When their time is only 6,000 years, they've been around here. Our time, we can't estimate. We don't know when we were born. I know what you used to think. But I'm here to tell you, we all was thinking wrong. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad, in response to a question posed to him by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. when they met in 1966, the question he asked the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was, do you believe that all whites are devils. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad used the example of the king snake and the rattlesnake. He said one is harmless and one is filled with poison. But remember, brother, both are still snakes. But if there is a rattlesnake in the field, who has been biting your brothers and your sisters and you go and tell them that that's a rattlesnake and all of the harm that has ever come to them has come to them from that particular particular source well then that rattler will think that uh, the warner is teaching hate he'll go back and tell the other snakes that this man is teaching hate this man is teaching hate but it's not hate it's just that uh, when you study people who have been harmed and discover the source of their injury, the source of all of their defects, and when you begin to point out that source, it's not that you hate the source, but your love for your people is so intense 
so, in, so great that uh, you must let them know what is wrong with them, what is the cause of their ills. And uh, this is one of the basic factors I believe involved when people think or when the propaganda is put out that Mr. Muhammad teaches hate. He teaches black people to love each other. And our love for each other is so strong. We don't have any room left in our house. The followers of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad recognized that name. Yes, sir. That we heard of Yahoo. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad told us about Yaqub a long time ago. Yes, sir. Matter of fact, Yaqub, that's the father of the devil. Yes, and when we say the devil, we don't mean some man down in the ground in a red suit. We ain't worried about no devil like that. We ain't never suffered nothing under a devil like that. But the one we have caught hell from is not a devil in the ground. It's the devil on top of the ground. It's the Caucasian white man. After Yaqub made his people and sent them back to the Holy Land, within six months they had turned the Holy Land upside down. And so we rounded up all that we could find and drove them out into the hills and cave sides of Europe. The cold caves the fierce and savage existence fighting for food. They became closer to the animals. That is what the word savage means. A savage, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad says, is a person that has lost the knowledge of themselves and is living a beast life. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that the white man in the caves of Europe after Moses was sent to them. Some of them, those who listened to Moses, they got the bright idea of trying to graft themselves back into black. And they went through a process and the honor that resulted in the monkey or the primate, one of the primate species. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that the monkeys and chimpanzee that that came with the white man that they were cursed that and part of their descent into bestiality climbing on trees running around on all fours that extended their arm proportions like the v8 they spent so much time in the trees eventually they devolved so far they, the result was monkey. Under their dark fur, chimpanzees have pale skin. He said that when you look at the Caucasian white man, you are looking at death. That is death. In him and under him, we have suffered death. Physical, mental and spiritual everything that he has ever given to you whether it is physical food mental food or spiritual food has brought about your and my death we don't have to look a long distance to find the adversary because the essence of that adversary is sitting up in ourselves. We know that Satan or the devil is the adversary, the opponent, the foe of Almighty God Allah and the people of God. Why would God make an adversary since he's above need of everything, why would he bring into existence an opponent, an opposer? What is his purpose? When we mentioned a few broadcasts ago 
that it is written in the Quran that Allah said, I am going to place a ruler in the earth. And the angels said, we celebrate your praise. We extol your holiness. But what would you put in the earth as a ruler except that which would create mischief and cause the shedding of blood? But Allah answered the angels saying, I know what you know not. Yaqub was trying to do something. He was trying to solve one of the mysteries of the ages. Really trying to solve the problem that you're trying to solve. That's why you really shouldn't look at Yaqub as your enemy. Because out of what Yaqub has done comes a solution to your problem. But what is your problem? Your problem is that you would like to be like God, which is to say perfect. But you find it so difficult to achieve. Check this out. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad said that I am Yaqub in reverse. You didn't hear what I what you, He said, I am Yaqub in reverse. Yaqub's goal was to make a new man. Is that right? Yaqub was born out of the dissatisfaction of the people. And from that 30% dissatisfaction, he produced a near 100% change. But he married the weaker on with the weaker and killed off the stronger, didn't he? His goal was to produce a world abstract to the will of God. When he finished his process of grafting, he made a new man that was weak and wicked. Well, if the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said he's Yaqub in reverse, then he's trying to not marry weak with weak, but strong with strong. He's not trying to produce a world abstract, the will of God. He's trying to bring the will of God back into the world. Just as Yaqub was a man that went to the island of Palan, it just so happens that Mas Mariam is on Stony Island. Huh? And we are in the center for the re-education of the so-called American Negro. We are in the spot where a new man is being made. Well, I'm sure that Yaqub had to have one man that was the first off the assembly line. What y'all think? There had to be one that was born that he could say, hey, this is my new man. And from this one, I'm going to make a whole bunch of copies of that. Well, I'm here to tell you the most honorable Elijah Muhammad can say the same thing. Because he has made a new man that will become the, the original that we will all copy and make into ourselves. So when one says, put on the new man, did you hear me? Put on the new man. All oh, praise is due to Allah. We're not talking about putting on a man that lived and died 2,000 years ago. We're talking about putting on the first fruit of them that slept. We're talking about putting on the first man off the assembly line of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad's new man project. Y'all right? Well, in order for us to be made into this new copy, we're going to have to go through some of the same steps. In fact, probably all of the steps to become the copy of the one that's among us. Would you agree? Put on the new man. Well, if the scripture says God's promise that he says, I will make all things new. Well, things don't create themselves. Things come from men and women. Is that right? So before you can have all things made new, the people have to be made new. And people aren't made new from the outfit they put on or the cell phone they have in their pocket 
or the car they drive or the money they have in their bank account, people are made new when they have a new mind. So in order for all things to be made new, it has to follow a certain pattern. New mind got to come to make a new man. Then the new man's got to make all the things new. So in order for God to make his word bond, he can't make all things new without using the matter of human beings as the vehicle and the tool for his word to be made bond. Y'all with me? So whenever he says we will be a specific people, and then all oh, man in general, we have been called out of the world to become the vessels, the vehicle, the tools in the hand of God by which he can put his mind or his energy or his spirit or his power in us that he can use this body, this brain to move matter, energy, space, and time to make a whole new universe. Man, that's a heck of a thing to be called to. Y'all with me? Uh, in you. So will the, uh, the great uh, Mahdi, uh, Master Farad Muhammad, he will also build a new world and a new people. And he did tell me that uh, uh, how that uh, we would uh, start taking a change in a new people. Now, just exactly what uh, we will look like I'm not too sure of that, but I do believe that he's going right back at the origin, but he's going to make a better people. Uh, what I mean to say, a people that will be more stronger physically, and uh, they will be taught in such way that they can live much longer. Uh, uh, individual I will live probably a thousand or more years and teaching something about the history, not the history, but uh, about the people on Mars, he often would refer to me uh, that just think of them living 1,200 uh, of our Earth years. He says, and we die in less than 100 years. It gives me an, an idea that uh, he wants to make a people that will live a thousand or more years. Thank you for watching this video. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, peace, man.